Uh, Melvin, thank you very much for joining us today for this interview. Uh, I'd like to ask you uh, about your the main topic you're actually sharing with the audience in Dubrovnik, uh, about the leadership, female leadership in uh, the emergency medicine. Would you like to say anything about it? Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. So I think there's sort of really three aspects. Um, I will really just concentrate on the first one is just really my personal experience because that really helps to frame uh, the issue about leadership in emergency medicine and just reflecting on my specific journey over the last 20 odd years. I will then uh, focus a little bit about women and healthcare in general and then talk a bit about the global impact that, that women have. So from my perspective, um, I was very interested in cardiothoracics initially and that's a specialization that I actually wanted to uh, eventually pursue as a professional career. However, I found at that stage I had um, there was a lack of mentorship, uh, specifically female surgeons. Um, I didn't find a lot of support for my rationale of going into that profession. And most people that I spoke to actually tried to deter me. And I eventually had uh, a very sort of introspective reflection and decided that I really wanted to find a career where I would have a work-life balance and be able to have a personal and professional career and I didn't want that to uh, take preference from a professional perspective. So I made the decision many years ago to focus on emergency medicine. It was a new speciality in South Africa and it really appealed to my uh, personality of being able to have a um, impact on patients fairly immediately and then being able to uh, refer them on or discharge as necessary so that's the really progression that I've made and I think the young um, uh, medical students and residents of today I'm hoping that a lot of that has changed that we are finding that there are a lot more men and women who are able to mentor them up and that we don't really have that scenario where certain professions in medicine become ring fence for certain genders and I think that's come a long way if we reflect then um, from uh, gender uh, issues relating to medicine in general I think there has been some pro progress but I still think there are, are areas that we need to focus on, specifically areas of equality and equity. It's not necessarily a priority in many of the medical school or residency programs talking about these sorts of issues. And I think globally across the world, there are many issues that uh, can be seen potentially as barriers relating to issues of culture, race and religion and things like that that we need to consider. So I think really going forward from a medical perspective, I think we really need to look at building and growing sustainable workforces that are um, representative of all genders and all races and religions and cultures and things like that. And I think that's where we need to really spend a lot of focus on. We have got some momentum, but we now need to take that to the next level. And the third point really just to mention is that we don't work as women in healthcare um, uh, in, as healthcare professionals really in isolation. We're part of a bigger community of um, parents and daughters and brothers and spouses and uncles etc. And I think as women we really need to be able to um, reflect on that from a global perspective that where we are currently as individuals is going to have an impact on our specific profession. Um, we've had a lot of challenges uh, recently in my country in South Africa relating to gender related violence and we're having a lot of very open and honest discussions on social media platforms and via uh, peaceful protests to be able to bring these issues to the government and out in the open and I think that's what we're going to be seeing a lot more going forward internationally is where we start to have discussions that are going to uh, ensure that minority groups, whether it's gender groups or whether it relates to um, ethnic minorities and the like, where we can have these conversations in safe spaces and where we're able to um, uh, develop really action plans to implement some uh, important change. Uh, what do you think about the IFM role in this uh, topic? I think it's crucial because specifically from the IFM perspective, um, I think we have a very special and unique um, global membership 
uh, of various organizations and I think from our uh, special interest group perspective it has been uh, very empowering to have so many voices from different areas uh, in the world. So I know within specific regions or countries there are certain agendas from a gender specific issue that uh, certain um, areas need focus on but I think what IFM can really bring is the fact that we have that global perspective and we do have the um, the networking and the the influence I hope on in an international scale to be able to make this conversation a global one.